Welcome, Spraylock Nation, to another glorious day here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Come to you straight from Studio 23. And we're, today we want to talk about concrete yet again. I know that's becoming a theme for us because we love concrete. We Absolutely. love what it does for, for us in the construction industry and to us as individuals and, and what it can do for the world and, and durability of concrete. We, we love that aspect sure. of it. Today we want to talk to you about plastic shrinkage and plastic shrinkage cracking and get into what that looks like, where it starts at, and, and, and eventually we'll get into videos of how to help prepare yourself from Absolutely. reducing those effects. Yes, that's a, that's a great topic, Josh, thanks. Plastic shrinkage is named that because it, it, it happens while the concrete is still relatively movable, or plastic, as, as we call it. Uh, generally, it's, it's occurring somewhere after the first finishing pass with trial, you know, trial machines. If, if you think about your concrete being ready to trial, it's happening between that time and the time that it's hit that initial set, uh, or sorry, final set uh, kind of level where, you're, where you pull the trial machines off. It's during that window and you will see cracks occurring on the top of the surface this is how you know plastic shrinkage is happening, is, is you'll see these cracks that are typically one to three feet long, and they're typically going to run in parallel, and they're gonna be out in the middle of the slab, and, and they're gonna be maybe yay distance apart, or maybe a little further. Yay distance? Yay distance. <laughs> That's an exact measurement here in the south. Elsewhere, maybe Absolutely. not, but for the most part, 18 <laughs> inches elsewhere. <laughs> in general, the, the cracks are not gonna intersect the edges of the slab. They're gonna be out in the middle, and they're caused by high winds, low humidity, and high concrete temperature. Anything that allows that surface to start drying out yes, faster than the, the, the bleed water can replace it. You hit the nail on the head, exactly right. So as far as uh, what's happening is you're, you're actually forming a little crust on the surface of the concrete because it's drying out quicker than it can be replenished from underneath from bleed water. And a lot of times concrete finishers, these are the key phrases you'll hear. You'll hear, man, this concrete feels spongy. Like I'm walking on it and it feels like it's moving underneath. Well, that's because it really is. It's still moist and not set up underneath and it's actually kind of setting up on the surface because it's drying out. So it feels a little weird when you walk on it. So differential setting. Differential setting because that top surface is crusting over. Yeah, so that you get plastic shrinkage cracking from that. Now a future video will talk about how you can uh, help combat plastic shrinkage possibly. I think we right. talked about doing yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get into that. I mean, but we're definitely talking about initial curing at that aspect yeah. of trying to make sure that you're maintaining that moisture uh, so that you don't have that. And there's products that can do that absolutely. As, as well as other methods. Thank you for all your viewers for being interested in, in learning more about concrete. And uh, if we can help you in any way learn uh, you know more about concrete or if we can help you with a particular project, let us know. We're happy to, uh, we love concrete and we're happy to help any way we can. Thank you.